Okay, Origin Materials. They're the world's leading carbon negative materials company. Their proprietary platform turns carbon found in biomass into useful materials while eliminating the need for fossil resources and capturing carbon in the process. Some pretty interesting stuff. A lot of companies talk about their ambitions of diminishing their carbon footprint. Well, Origin makes net zero possible. Large consumer goods companies are able to access versatile, carbon negative, economical materials and technologies, and of course, utilize Origin's expertise to apply them wisely. Already we've seen companies like Pepsi, Nestle, Dannon, and even Ford have already partnered with Origin to create 100% plant-based PET plastic, a game-changing initiative in several multi-billion dollar industries that will have a substantial impact on climate change. Other notable partners include Mitsubishi and Palantir. How does it work? The Origin platform replaces oil as the foundational feedstock for the material economy. In other words, most of our everyday products are made with plastic that are produced with oil. Origin is using trees, not food, and chemistry, not biology, to efficiently produce new era of net zero materials, all in one step versus many. What's next for Origin? In their August 12 earnings call, Origin told shareholders they're committed to broadening their customer base beyond just packaged goods into apparel, automotive, and industrial end markets, which makes sense why now they've partnered with Ford. In their most recent earnings call, Origin Materials said the total demand for their business has grown to $3.5 billion, up from $1.9 um, when the company's analyst day happened in April. Their Origin One facility is still on schedule to be completed by the end of 2022, and the money that Origin received from the SPAC deal will be funding that construction. Origin Two, their other plant, is also on track to be finished by mid-2025. The company reaffirmed its outlook for the fiscal year of 2021, which calls for an adjusted EBITDA of $25 million loss and a capital expenditures of up to $111 million.